Can we roll? We good? Are we recording? Yeah! <laughs> cool. This chair's a little squeaky. That's gonna okay. occur.
Great.
one spot in the middle, bro. Which, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> fine. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, we, we recovered. Do you want to come soon? I like that tempo that you were just doing. Yeah. Good. One, good. two, one, two, three, four. <laughs>
Yeah. yeah. Are you recording? Oh, hello, Internet at Large. We're here with uh, my personal fan, personal, like, one of my guitar heroes, Guy Buttery. <laughs> Guy, it's an absolute honor to have you in studio. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So you just played an absolutely beautiful set. Thank you. Thanks, and you've also man. just launched a new album. That is true. Um, I've been touring it around the country for like the last five weeks now. And it's coming to an end tomorrow. And yeah, man, it's been cool. It's been interesting because every gig has been with almost every gig has been with different people. Yeah. The Joburg gigs I did with someone else. The Cape Town gigs I did with, as a quartet. Uh, the Durban gigs I did as a trio. And I played solo last night. And mm. tomorrow with Gareth Gale again. So yeah, it's been cool. Yeah, I was going to ask because I heard you mentioning in Cape Town you did it with Shane Cooper. Yes. So exactly. how, how how does that work when you when you when you're touring a, a personal work? I know I know on your album you had a whole lot of different featuring artists yeah. there, was, there was Dan Pitlancy there was a bit of Derek Gripper every mm. track seemed to have a different featuring artist so how mm. do you bring an album like that which features a whole lot of very um, unique musicians mm. how do you bring an album like that uh, uh, to a live audience with different musicians in different provinces sure I mean if effectively the pieces in my opinion stand alone as, as solo guitar pieces most of them kind of seem to work on their own they say maybe one or two but I just chose to work with people who I know very well and, you know, mainly kind of just because we mates, you know. Mm. So um, so it, it's, it's been a kind of men rehearsals and just like, <laughs> you know, winging it, like a lot of nodding. And we would actually almost always set the stage up in a semicircular fashion so we could yeah. just cue each other because there was a yeah. lot of kind of... But also all the guys were just so good, you know, and people can just like, you know wing it like with Derek Ripper the gigs we had like no rehearsal he came to soundcheck you know and he played so so working with those guys with those guys like that it's pretty it's pretty easy man I think I mean yeah that must be quite an experience being able to play with I mean well I mean you are definitely one of the best guitarists in the country but working with others as well like do you guys bounce off each other work with each other I mean do you, do you ever find yourself saying hey that moves quite cool I'm gonna steal it yeah oh, man show. that happens that happens a lot I think actually and I think that's quite a healthy thing um Particularly those guys, man. I mean, like like Dan Petlansky and Derek Ripper and Nips on Despair. They're serious, seriously good musicians, you know. So there's a lot of there's a lot of internal theft, if you like. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of that. So yeah, I mean, on 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 the idea of theft and musicianship as it is, <laughs> uh, how, how how did you start? Like, how did you begin this whole process? Um, more or less, uh, at, at, like like anyone, I guess. There was a guitar around the house. My brothers played guitars. There was a lot of there was a lot of music in the house. There was a lot of like just noodling with instruments of all kind, um, and the guitar just grabbed me, man. It was like one of those like, particularly the acoustic guitar. I mean, it was funny because growing up, I learned like Led Zeppelin tunes, you know, that oh, was yeah, my of thing. Course, yeah. And then I and then I heard like Madala Kuneni and I heard Tananas and and those guys and that kind of just the the, the world of possibilities opened up, you know. Mm. And the guitar seemed like such a great um, tool to do that with because if you think about it, I mean, it's used in like pretty much every genre imaginable, almost, you know. It really does cross over so well. And my, my interest lies in the space between those, you know. Mm. They're sort of amalgamation of, of different genres. Well, I mean, Madala was on your latest mm. album, was he not? He was on, he's been on two records. He wasn't on the, on the most recent though, okay. no. but we worked together quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. So would you, I, I mean, that's, I mean, obviously like uh, that comes from a pretty historical Mascundi mas, mas, mas background, mm. would you say Mascundi's influenced you a lot in your playing? Definitely so, in a, in a big way. And, and, and it's funny, I'm quite firm about the fact that, that because people, people do pick up on that, I think, but I'm quite firm about the fact that I, I certainly don't play it as a, okay. as a tradition. And, and I don't, play anything as a tradition I dabble in like Indian classical stuff and, and Celtic ideas and 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 lots of West African ideas but but my interest doesn't lie so much in in trying to do the tradition so well um, because there's so many great guys doing that you know playing playing Muscundi like really really mm. really just just so amazingly moving at what they do but my, my interest lies in in, in, in in sort of trying to pick out little elements from it and then trying to see if you can throw it in with something totally different yeah and i think we did quite well with that in my opinion on this record in in the fact that we were able to displace some of those those musical styles within other contexts and and that interests me 
a lot. Mm. <laughs> no, that's, I mean, it, 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 incidentally, like, I, yeah. I used to play trumpet, and then okay. I started playing guitar once I'd heard a Led Zeppelin record. Sure. So sure. Our, 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 our lineage may be into moving into guitars. <laughs> Mildly similar, that's probably where the comparison between sure. the two of us end, because I'm nowhere near as good <laughs> as you are. Uh, but so you, 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 this album features a lot of a, a lot of a lot of different musicians. How did you produce mm. it? Were you were you acting as producer? Were you working in a single studio? No, the album was the album was recorded across across three continents actually. Oh wow! Okay, there, there was um, there was a wonderful American guitar player named Will Ackerman who founded a, a label in the late seventies um, called Wyndham Hill, and he he recorded his parts in Vermont in the U.S. Uh, there's a Sarangi player from Italy who recorded in. Uh, in, in Italy and there's a singer um, he's now living in France he recorded his parts there and then it was recorded between Durban Joburg and Cape Town and then and then numerous other little lo- okay. it took two years to record purely wow, because okay. <laughs> because the album was it, it wasn't because we were kind of slack about it it was because the songs were very much in, it was very much a, the, 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 the compositions were kind of written in the recording process as mm-hmm. opposed to coming into the studio with cool these are the tracks you know yeah and and we started out in a farmhouse in Zululand, and mates came up Gareth Gale and and Nibs van der Spey came up and laid down parts and we did a whole bunch of demos, and some of the the the, 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 the takes from those sessions remained on the on the final album. So, did you mm. cut demos and then send them to other musicians and ask them for their input, yeah. or was That's it ex- so? Or, or did you did you ever get a chance to sort of workshop it with them? I suppose when when the guys chilling in Italy, you maybe didn't get the chance Not to so work much. with them personally. But no, in fact, the guy in Italy I never met. I I, I was <laughs> looking for a. Um, this is my favorite instrument of all time. Is a, is a, is an Indian instrument called uh, the sarangi, which is effectively a bowed. Um, kind of small little square box of a thing beautiful sound mm-hmm. and and I, I was pushing out to try and find a sarangi player and obviously went straight to india not personally but online to try and find the the guys and uh it it turned out that the person that responded was this guy in italy who who i've since you know no well, i have never yet met um and his playing was amazing but to answer your question yo some of the stuff was workshop quite heavily particularly mm. with gareth gareth's kind of the backbone of the album okay in terms of the arrangements and in terms of the form he's very good with that um and then nibs van der spey features on quite a few tracks um but st- people like dan Petlansky and and Vusi Maklasela, those guys are just so good, man. You mm. just go into the studio and you throw an idea at them, and they throw something much better at you. you and know? they just came in and played the track w- yeah. off you. So, so you, so you had the chance to work with them at least on the tracks. Yeah, no, definitely. Everything yeah. was very, it was very, um, it was very personal on that level. And and the Vusi session was was so cool because I'm just like uh, I'm just a huge fan of his. <laughs> I really I really like what he does. And I'd worked with him before, ten years before, on one of his records. Um, and I had some vocal ideas in mind and I gave them to him and he kind of like, you know, nailed them and he did the harmonies and, and way better than I thought. And then I said, well, hey, man, why don't you just freestyle some vibes? Mm. You know, just 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 go for it. And that was that was what we used because mm. because the improv was just mind numbing, you know. So, yeah, it was it was an interesting process. But I mean, that's that's what music is, really. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's that magic that happens in between. That's the thing. The spaces of thought where you're like, yeah. I don't know what to do, and then something incredible yeah, happens. Exactly. Well, onto more uh, serious questions. Yeah. Uh, we've all been wondering. I mean, having followed your career for 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 decades, is it my shampoo. Uh, yeah. How, what what conditioner <laughs> do you use? Good lord! I got asked this on a radio interview, the other day, <laughs> and it went on for a long time. Let's make this brief. Um, whatever the wife stocks in the in in the shower, and uh, but sometimes. I mix it up with a bit of uh, bicarb and, and apple cider vinegar. Okay, so who's, 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 who's your barber? Do you get a little, <laughs> you get a little cut occasionally? Or, your hair always <laughs> seems the same length every time I see you. It's, it's like magic. <laughs> so it died a long time yeah. ago. I went for a haircut in 2000 and... I'll tell you, 2012. And the time before that was 97. It'd been 15 years. So what, I, what happened in between there? Just, like just the love just flowed through, man. <laughs> That's incredible. So your hair is as amazing as your guitar playing then. Next question. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Guy, it's been an absolute Mm. honor to have you in studio. Cool, man. Thanks for having us. we wish you the best of luck for the rest of your Mm. tour. Cool, man. Thank you. Sweet. (laughs) Larka. That was amazing. Was that all right? Was that all right? Was that all right?